Hi, I'm Christy. Welcome to Weird and Witchy Shit, a place for, well, Weird and Witchy Shit. Here we talk about everything from the magic of yoga, rituals, tarot, crystals, astrology, self-love, mental health, spiritual stuff, spooky things, and anything of the mystical variety. So if that sounds like the kind of shit you're into, then you're in the right place, my friend. Welcome to the coven. So today's episode we're diving into a little bit of internet folklore, talking about the terrifying phenomenon and cultural icon that is Slenderman. So I love anything horror related and Slenderman is no exception. So I first heard of Slenderman many many moons ago, maybe about like 13 years ago, something like that. And I was round at my friend's house with my friend and my cousin and they asked me if I wanted to play a game and it was a game where you go through the woods and you have to collect these notes off of trees and you have to avoid the slender man popping out on you. And it was actually quite a good game, like uh, that's the all that I remember of it, um, but from what I remember it was a lot of fun, it was creepy, it had a lot of jump scares, whatever. And then afterwards they were like, oh, do you actually know about Slenderman? And I was like, hmm, tell me more. They told me that the game was actually based on a real folklore tale of a tall humanoid being who kidnapped children and had been snapped in the background of many unknown people's photographs. So I was definitely intrigued and that's when I kind of started looking into Slenderman to see what he was all about. They also told me that he normally did kidnap children but adults weren't entirely safe from Slenderman because one way that he could actually get you was just purely by thinking about him almost as if the fear around him almost made him stronger so the more you thought of him the more likely he was to get to you and it's like one of those things where someone tells you not to think of a pink elephant you're going to think of a pink elephant don't think of slender man you're going to be obsessing about slender man and my friends definitely know that i have an obsessive mind so clearly they wanted rid of me because they knew that i was not going to stop thinking about this fucker so that night we started looking up pictures of Slenderman and kind of diving into like the internet history and stuff on him. It was just all a little bit of fun. Not going to lie, I was a little bit scared. It's not even like I was, like I said, like a little child. I was like 18 or 19 and I found it pretty creepy. I uh, used to be kind of a shite bag when it came to like horror things. Like I've always loved horror and scary things and shit like that. But even though I've always loved it, I used to be definitely like fucking terrified of anything horror related. Like when I was 15 and I watched The Ring for the first time, I definitely slept in my mum's bed that night because I was too scared to sleep in my own bed. Now I'm fine, horror movies don't freak me out, but they definitely used to have like a grip on me. Anyway, let me take you back in time to 2009, so get your Dream Mat Moose Foundation, your Velour Juicy Couture tracksuit and your Ratty Extensions at the ready. In 2009, the internet forum Something Awful had a Photoshop competition to create the scariest paranormal image possible via Photoshop. And user Victor Surge, his real name is Eric Knudsen, entered this competition having absolutely no idea that he would make internet history. He submitted two black and white photos into this competition. The first image was of a group of children and young teens from the early 80s walking towards the camera. And in the background of this picture, you can see an eerily tall, thin, humanoid, faceless creature. Along with the picture, there was a caption. We didn't want to go. We didn't want to kill them. But its persistent silence and outstretched arms horrified and comforted us at the same time. 1983, photographer unknown, presumed dead. 
The second image shows some little kids playing on a park. One is standing on a chute and behind the, the little kids there is like a wooded area and the same faceless creature is standing there but this time he appears to have tentacles coming down by his side. The caption on this image reads one of two recovered photographs from the Stirling City Library blaze. Notable for being taken the day which 14 children vanished and for what is referred to as the Slender Man. Deformity is cited as film defects by officials. Fire at library occurred one week later. Actual photograph confiscated as evidence. 1986. Photographer Mary Thomas. Missing since June 13th, 1986. These photos along with the caption made them seem a little bit less like a photoshop competition and gave them a little bit more legitimacy. You know how it is when the internet gets hold of something and it kind of grows arms and legs and tentacles and it grows taller and thinner and more faceless than you could ever have imagined. Online these pictures grew increasingly more popular especially on a website called Creepypasta. And if you don't know what Creepypasta is, it's basically an internet forum where people would submit short, scary stories, anything strange, weird, creepy and scary. It was like a horror fiction website or actually I think it is actually still up and running but definitely not as popular as it was more in internet kind of early years, 2009-2010 was kind of peak creepy pasta time. So on creepy pasta people started to add their own slender man submissions and kind of add to the folklore with pictures and stories. So as more and more people started to add to the slender man database uh, he started to have more of a background, different abilities, it kind of just continued to snowball and get a lot bigger and it kind of blew up and became sort of viral. And because so many people were adding to the story, the origin of Slenderman kind of got a little bit blurry. A lot of people were discovering him for the first time from websites like Creepypastas and True Slenderman sightings and True Slenderman stories and there was photographic, in quotation marks, evidence present. So a lot of people didn't actually realise that this stemmed from a Photoshop competition. And although it was Victor Serge who originally created Slenderman, I definitely think him becoming as big and as popular as he is was more of a collaborative effort from everyone on the internet. Depictions of Slenderman do vary slightly but normally he is extremely tall, very thin, long arms and legs, wearing a black suit and he has no apparent facial features. And in a lot of Slenderman stories he has tentacles that can kind of outstretch and grow out from his back. Most of the older Slenderman stories involve him impaling his victims on trees as well as stalking and kidnapping usually of children. And it's said that he normally focuses more on children because they are easier to manipulate and to convince into doing his bidding and it's obviously a lot easier to gain the trust of a child than it is to gain the trust of an adult. I also think it has a lot to do with that there's very few things that's scarier than something coming and attacking your children and on these creepy pasta things maybe it would be more likely children and younger people that were going to believe this. If you tell a 30 year old about Slender Man, they're just going to be like, I right, no bother. But if you tell like an eight year old, they're going to be pretty fucking scared. There was also a lot of talk of people, again, mainly children, becoming proxies for Slender Man. And a proxy is basically someone who does the dirty work for you. So like a right hand man or a lackey or a little minion. It's kind of like, you know, when people talk about Dracula being able to enthrall his victims and kind of hypnotise them and take over them entirely so that they kind of become an extension of him that type of thing. Some people become proxies for Slender Man out of love and admiration for him and some people do so out of fear for themselves and their loved ones. 
Also, Slenderman possesses abilities to kind of brainwash people and drive them to the brink of insanity so that eventually they will willingly become a proxy for him because they've been forced into madness. Like I says, a lot of stories focused a lot on impaling and kidnapping and more so the physical violence side of Slenderman, whereas as stories started to evolve, they definitely focused a lot more on the psychological aspects, the madness, the paranoia, the taking over your mind, the stalking, which I actually find all the more <laughs> terrifying when it comes to horror characters. I don't really find the physical violence side of things all that scary even though I love a good slasher movie. I feel like a classic teen slasher is the best type of horror movie in my opinion. However, um, when it comes to things that are actually scary, I think that the psychological aspect is definitely more terrifying. And it says that Slenderman really enjoys the slow burn. He often picks his victims and watches them from afar so that he can watch them slowly deteriorate and he'll take his time in really making them grow more and more paranoid and more and more fearful and he really enjoys the aspect of watching them descend into insanity at a slow rate. Slender sickness is the name that's given to this fear and paranoia and some of the warning signs that you might have this slender sickness would be horrific nightmares, nosebleeds, physical sickness and losing huge chunks of your time out of your day. Again, how you become a victim of Slender Man changes depending on who you ask and what source you get your information from, but it says that you can be targeted purely by being in contact with someone who Slender Man has already targeted and because Slender Man sometimes chooses his victims weeks, months, years, decades before he actually makes it known to them that they have been chosen as a victim. Anyone could be a victim of Slenderman's and not even know it. So if you can become a, a Slenderman victim by being in contact with someone who is a Slenderman victim, they might be unwillingly or unknowingly putting you in danger simply by just existing and being around you. Researching them is another way that gets you to be a target of them or simply just being aware of his existence. So I am fucked. It's kind of like the more you think about them, the stronger your connection to them gets, but then that's a catch-22 because like I said, it's like the pink elephant thing and the more you try not to think about something, that in itself is you thinking of it. I really love Slenderman as a horror character and one of the things that I like most about him is this unease and the feeling of there being no escape from him and pretty much there is anything that you can think, is this a victim of slender sickness or is Slenderman after me? And it's like anytime you question yourself about that, you're actually just bringing them closer and closer to you and I find that really scary and really creepy and that's one of the things that I I just think as a horror character Slender Man is really spot on and he's really good at playing on what people's fears are. Victor Surge when creating Slender Man said that he used influences such as Stephen King's The Mist and Zach Parsons' The Insidious Beast to formulate something whose motives can barely be comprehended and causes general unease and terror in a general population. And I don't think that anyone can argue that that is exactly what he's managed to do with this Slender Man character. And please note that I do say Slender Man character because if I've not made it obvious throughout and I'm sure that you probably already know that he is entirely fictional. Like I said, Victor Surge entirely made him up for a Photoshop competition and people on the internet collaboratively kind of added to this Slender Man story. Slender Man is just an internet folklore tale. He is not real in any way. 
shape or form he is entirely fictional entirely made up and all the information that you find online is just scary stories and creepy pastas that are meant just to scare you a little bit but i can promise you in no way is he real and I'm just saying that because I don't think that my viewership is necessarily going to be like a lot of younger people but you never really know when you're on the internet exactly who's going to be watching so I just feel like I had to make that really very clear. And I also do want to be really mindful of the fact that Slenderman and the fear around Slenderman has led to some actual in real life crimes. One of these crimes in particular is in 2014 when two 12 year old friends Anissa and Morgan took their other friend Peyton into the woods to sacrifice her to Slenderman in attempt to become one of his proxies. Now I'm not going to get into that here because I like to keep this platform a little bit more fun and light-hearted and I really just wanted to talk about the the background of Slenderman here. However, if you are interested in true crime and you want to know about what has been widely known as the Slenderman stabbings where these two girls attacked their young friend and um, I actually do have another YouTube channel and it's as told by Christy. I will leave the link to that channel down in the description of this so that if you fancy going and checking that out I'm going to be doing a video all about that over there. And so that is it for today's episode. I would really like to know what your thoughts and opinions on Slenderman are. It would be really fun if in the comments you put in any, maybe you're someone who's created one of these Slenderman stories before or maybe he used to really scare you when you were younger or just whatever. Any thoughts, opinions, whatever you have down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. If you'd like to continue the conversation, you can get me on Instagram at Christie's underscore coven. That's K-R-I-S-T-Y-S underscore coven. You can also find me on YouTube at Christie's Coven where I post a lot of free yoga classes and shit like that. And I'd love to have you join because it's not a coven if it's just me. And until next time, bye.